Just about five weeks to the first preseason game, but still some pretty big names on the free agent market, including Le'Veon Bell, who did not play in two of Kansas City's three playoff games last season. Bell saying recently he wouldn't even consider a return to KC. The quote more specifically about head coach Andy Reid. Bell saying, I'd never play for Andy Reid again. I'd retire first. Our NFL writer Tyler Sullivan has an article on CBSSports.com on potential landing spots for remaining free agents. And we're going to start with Le'Veon Bell. Uh, what suitors could be out here for him and where might he end up signing in your opinion, Tyler? Yeah, I know Bell was the toughest one. He was really, you know, because of all the quote unquote baggage, I guess if you want to call it that, that comes with him. If you are the New York Jets, you know that he's probably going to trash you on the way out. If you're the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid, you know he's trashing you. So if you're a head coach, you know that you're running the possibility of things maybe not working so well with him post that career. But right now, I look at the New Orleans Saints as a team that could be an interesting fit for him. Obviously, they have a big backfield with Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray. But but there's an opportunity to be had there. The Saints look at Le'Veon Bell and look at that talent and say, hey, listen, this is a guy that really could help us as we transition to Jameis Winston and or Taysom Hill under center. Maybe that's a spot where they could improve upon it. You know, Bell, if he's looking at this situation, he's no longer considered a number one running back. He's going to take that back seat to Alvin Kamara. But can he contend with a guy like Latavius Murray? Take some of those carries away from him? That'd be something that I think he'd be interested in. It's probably everything he thought he was going to get in Kansas City when he's backing up Clyde Edwards Lair. Just ultimately didn't end up happening. But if he goes to an offensive mind similar to Andy Reid and Sean Payton, I see that as an interesting fit if both sides want to make it work. Okay, so maybe the Saints for Le'Veon Bell. How about fellow running back Todd Gurley, who we had on Super Bowl week, and he didn't seem too worried about finding a landing spot but here we are set to enter July, and there's still major concerns about Gurley's knees. Yeah, for me, Todd Gurley, you know, he's a guy that, again, is not going to be the number one running back that we've seen in years past, the 2017 Offensive Player of the Year. He's no longer that guy we saw that in Atlanta last year. But what if, again, he takes a secondary role in an offense, and I'm looking at the Los Angeles Chargers as a possible scenario. It's somewhat of a homecoming for him, obviously playing with the Rams for so many years. But now he goes back to SoFi Stadium, goes to the other locker room, and he's going within the backfield that has Austin Eckler clearly as the number one guy. But as we've kind of talked about over the last few years here with Austin Eckler, he's not a big dude. He's not someone that can go in between the tackles or you really want kind of using in goal line sets. Yes, they have Justin Jackson. Yes, they have Joshua Kelly. But if a guy like Todd Gurley's available, could he be the next Melvin Gordon that we saw a few years ago in that offense? help them in bruising situations between the A-gap, goal line situations. To me, that's something that could help there. Obviously, Austin Eckler is, like I said, a smaller dude. You don't want to open him up to injuries. But you want to get him out in space. That's where you can create a little thunder and lightning with Todd Gurley there. For me, that's something that I think he would consider, and that's something I think the Chargers should consider as well. Still only 26 years old. Hard to believe Todd Gurley's still a free agent. As we continue to talk free agent fits, with Tyler Sullivan, you mentioned the Chargers could be the fit for Todd Gurley. That brings us to defensive end Melvin Ingram, who made three straight Pro Bowls for the Chargers before only playing in seven games last season with a knee injury. Yeah, I feel like we're kind of sleeping on Melvin Ingram just in general. Like you said, three straight Pro Bowls entering last season and then entering last season, five straight seasons with at least seven sacks. You know, he's not a, a you know, defensive piece that's going to anchor somebody to a Super Bowl, but he could be that veteran guy that helps a team that's budding. And, and you know, we're talking about, you know, the, the Rams and the Chargers switch. Well, I think Ingram could switch Chargers to Rams. I think that that would be a very interesting pairing there to help with that front seven. That would almost be unstoppable if you decide to put him with Aaron Donald, who's already tweeted about that possibility earlier this offseason. To me, if you inject somebody like that and if he remains healthy, you're looking at a front seven that is absolutely lethal. And it does seem to work with what Los Angeles is trying to do. They've clearly thrust open a Super Bowl window after acquiring Matthew Stafford. They're going stars in scrubs. They're trading all their draft picks. They're bringing in star talent. They're picking up pieces when they can. If a guy like Ingram's available at the right price, he has all the talent in the world, again, if he remains healthy, to help that front seven be even more lethal in the NFC West. Ingram, 32 years old. Richard Sherman is now 33 years old, also coming off an injury-plagued season. Where might his potential landing spot be? 
Chris, you don't know me too well, but I'm a romantic. I really wanted to have him return home to Seattle. It's just a great storyline, but ultimately, I, I thought something that was a little bit more juicier was seeing a star on the side of his helmet heading to Dallas and helping that secondary. We all know that Dallas's secondary hasn't been particularly great. Obviously, last year, we all know the stories, the struggles that the Cowboys faced, but there is an intriguing opportunity here. They've spent the last two drafts in the second round addressing the cornerback spot, Diggs and Joseph, over the last two years. Sherman's openly said that he'd be welcoming an opportunity where he can come in and mentor some young guys. Dallas provides that ultimate opportunity for him where he can play a little bit help this young core ascend and what better reunion I was talking about obviously Seattle but there would be a mini reunion here in Dallas because Dan Quinn is now the defensive coordinator obviously Quinn the defensive coordinator during the Legion of Boom days in Seattle there is clearly a familiarity with the system could help those young guys and it would be an interesting little footnote to the end of Sherman's career where all of a sudden if he's helping Dallas turn into a Super Bowl contender a legit top flight secondary that is quite the footnote to go out on. Yeah, they certainly need the help on defense. When Sherman was healthy in San Francisco, he was still uh, average to above average cornerback even at his age. One more for you, Tyler. How about Golden Tate? The numbers really tailed off the last couple of seasons with the Giants. He came out with his own list. He said, Rams, Titans, Colts, those are my three. But you say, uh -uh, let's look elsewhere. Where are you thinking? Yeah, I went a little bit off script with him. You know, obviously, those are the places he might want to go, but it depends. Would that team welcome him? Are those teams looking for a wide receiver? Tennessee obviously just got Julio Jones. They're kind of cap strung. The team that I'm looking at, the New England Patriots. Obviously, we all know that they spent out of the wazoo in free agency at the start, but could they continue to look for some pass catching help? Yes, they addressed the tight ends with Hunter Henry and John New Smith, but Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne, they're not the Julio Jones acquisition. They're not the top flight guys. And Golden Tate to me is somebody who previously had interest in the Patriots back in 2019, albeit with Tom Brady still on the roster. But if there's still some interest of playing with Bill Belichick, this is a roster that could still use legit wide receivers to compete over the course of training camp. And he could very easily, I could see a scenario where he is the number two, number three option. Again, the numbers did tail off, but he's still a premier route runner, still a guy that could contend. And New England's a team that very desperately needs some wide receiver help. So those are five uh, big names but aging stars still on the free agent market. Golden Tate, Richard Sherman, Melvin Ingram, Todd Gurley, and Le'Veon Bell. Tyler Sullivan has an article on CBSSports.com on landing spots for the, the top five remaining free agents. Tyler, thank you so much. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.